Hey, what's going on Capricorn? It's Robin here with Aries Fire Tarot. What's up and how's it going? So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I'm getting ready to do a bonus reading for June 2020. So the bonus reads are all a little bit uh, different than my other reads. I do like a monthly general reading and then Wealth and Abundance and then I do a Star Guide read. And today I'm doing an inner child reading for you guys. So these have been really fascinating reads. So I hope you enjoy and I hope it resonates and I hope that, you know, you get something really important from this reading. And if you do, please let me know down below in the comments what really resonated with you and um, what made an impact. So I was guided to use the Witch's Tarot to do this reading for you guys, and I really hope you enjoy. And thanks again for being here and for all your subscribes, you guys, all your comments. Really just means the world to me, and I just, you know, love you guys. So let's have a look at the personality of your inner child. And this is something that you may or may not be aware of. So anyway, I'm going to do a deck cut right now, personality of your inner child. We've got the Queen of Wands. So right away I'm seeing somebody that is compelled to excel um, and do a lot and probably assign yourself as the caretaker, the emotional caretaker of your family from a very, very early age. Something that's probably never been released as you moved into adulthood you know, anywhere in your life. So this is a very interesting card with the Queen of Wands, but she's a very luxurious version of the Queen of Wands. Like most Queen of Wands are in some sort of attack mode. And I really love that this one is in a repose and just the color of her garments. They're so, again, I'm getting the word luxurious, relaxed, very secure. So I think you guys have an amazing inner child personality here. Um, you could also be very magnetically attracted to fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, yeah, you've got a lot going on in this card here. I think that you guys could really easily attract finance if you put your mind to it because your inner child knew how to do it. Um, again, that magnetization of the personality. So you guys might not be aware of your manifestation ability, but your inner child is absolutely knows how to do it. So let's see an area of your life where your inner child causes trouble. <laughs> so <laughs> fascinating. So we've got the eight of swords here. So if you guys feel like you're always thinking about the same thing or you like to sort of, I think obsess is a, a strong word, but you favor like the hamster wheel sort of thinking with the eight of swords, your inner child may put you there because your inner child really knows what it wants and it thinks very strongly about things. So your adult mind might be looking for solutions and your inner child keeps on bringing you back to what they would conceive to be as normal. So it's like you guys might have a bit of a battle of the wills. And that could cause trouble because I'm really seeing that your inner child is connected deeply to your higher self. Um, so it keeps on pulling you back into a certain train of thought. And you might be trying to stop these thoughts or thought processes and you're unable to because your inner child is so self-assured and knows exactly where you need to go because you know children tend to remember past lives and they are deeply connected to spirit guides before they get taught that that sort of thing is sort of nonsense or sort of you know the filters get put in by society um, so your inner child can be a really strong influence for you. So let's see how to nurture yourself in that area so you don't get kind of pulled back into the hamster wheel. You've got the justice card here. So really just seeing where you guys can release any sort of control over that and start to gain trust into your inner child, which could, because they're so connected, like I said before, 
to your higher self and your higher self sees your timelines. Like I've described higher self as sort of being a periscope. Um, if you guys have ever seen RuPaul's Drag Race, there was this one and I can't remember her name, Drag Queen, she had this um, costume that was Ornatia. So it was like having a head above a head and that is what the higher self is. It's like having a periscope so you can see above everything else without your human consciousness getting in the way. So if you were to rely a little bit more on your inner child and the impulses that you receive from them, um, things would work out really, really, really well here. Justice card again, another divine feminine character, um, deeply confident and sitting absolutely self-assured here. And this justice card is like pretty solid so you guys can really connect on that basis and there's a lot of yellow flowers appearing in here too so you could be divinely connected to a higher level of abundance through your inner child and i'm getting words like if your adult self would stop trying to minimize your inner child being. Fascinating. So where to set limits on your inner child? Hmm. So, okay, so we've got the shadow self here. The shadow self is um, directly equivalent to the devil card. In other decks and this is this is a really scary card to me it shows the innermost workings of your fears so if your inner child is afraid and it could be causing like these warning signs to go up to you where your inner child is saying hey you're going the wrong way and it can make you like put you in this prison again you know because there's a lot of Let's see. Look at this, you guys. Okay, so you've got the personality of your inner child is the Queen of Wands. And how to nurture yourself in that area is the Justice card. And it's very self-assured energy. Very um, composed. Um, knows exactly who they are and what they want. Uh, very regal positioning. And then an area of your life where your inner child causes trouble is the hamster wheel thinking and feeling very overwrought. And then the limits is the shadow self or devil card. So for some reason, your inner child is afraid of you taking the wrong route. And could be really rattling, like you could possess this energy all the time but your inner child, and I see somewhat falsely, is raising warning signs to you um, because your inner child, while they're very connected to spirit and higher self, they're probably unaware of the human journey that you have to take while you're here in order to remember all these things. So your inner child is very intuitive, but because they're so young, they're also quite fearful and they're causing sort of rampant... Um, overthinking for you Capricorn so let's see where to let your inner child run free this should be interesting so we have the three of wands so you can channel the vision of your inner child and I just wanted to pause here you guys and let you guys know that um, I've used a Kenneth Suarez healing your inner child um, meditation and his last name is s-o-u-r-a-s i'm not affiliated with him i just find he's just an excellent guided meditator guy so and could be very helpful to you because your inner child could take you far and away you know to places that you've never been before but you do have to get the fear component of your inner child a little bit under control and that's where that kind of soirees um, meditation can come in really handy. It's not long. It's like 15, 20 minutes, you know, um, you can do it multiple times and it's quite, uh, healing and releasing for you. So I would really look at that because like the dark side of your inner child is quite dark. 
you know, very fearful. You know, something may have happened to make your inner child a little bit of an alarmist. And that could just be, like I said before, the innocence of the thinking because they're not sure how to interpret what your adult self is doing. But you as an adult should be able to look at like a, the childlike facet of yourself and be able to promote that healing. And then your inner child could take you to those far away distant shores that you're looking at that could provide all the abundance that you're looking for in your life. And again, you've got a fire sign energy here, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, that could come in and probably help you or inspire you. Maybe one of your parents is a fire sign. You could go have a conversation, like maybe something happened that derailed you as a child and sort of shook that self-assurance. So let's see gifts that will come from healing your inner child. And that's why I recommend that healing video because if you take steps to heal your inner child, um, you could probably accelerate your lifestyle quite a bit. So let's have a card here. Um, here it is, you guys, the magician can come out. So your inner child definitely needs a hug, some reassurance that, you know, there are things going on in your human life that are going to seem a little bit earth shaking, but to stay composed and then you can just sort of send your inner child love and hugs and appreciation uh, for all that they're doing to for you, but that you as an adult can take over um, working on the earthly plane as a human and then you can rely on each other, you know, for you to take care of whatever is going on, like sort of the machinations of your human life. And then your inner child can guide you towards what is more abundant for you and open up basically, and I want to say Pandora's box, and infinite possibilities because they're more attuned to your higher self than I think that you could ever hope to be. So once you open these channels of communication, you should really be able to start really manifesting at a rapid rate. Very fascinating reading here for you guys. Very interesting. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Just really powerful magic here underlying a little bit of fear. Um, there's some definite commonalities in these cards. You'll notice that the three of wands is wearing the same sort of gear as the magician. So it's like and it could be that your inner child is like divine feminine and your adult persona is divine masculine and sort of finding a way to blend these two um, so that you can work together for your ultimate success in your adulthood, adulthood in your current reality and then sort of banish this eight of swords and shadow self to where it belongs to the, that can go to bed, right? That can just put its head down. And then, you know, be self-assured and magical. So, wow, you guys have a really cool reading here. And I hope this was very helpful for you on your path here and now. So, take care. Namaste, Capricorn. Take care. Bye.